We're here in Ladyville, California, Mendocino County, USA. And I'm here with the one and only Mean Gene. Yo, thank you, bro, for making time. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you, brother, so much, dude. Uh, it's been cool to like see you develop, you know what I'm saying, as time continues to roll out. And I was just talking before the interview that, you know, just seeing you is so refreshing because it just reminds me of operators who kind of like don't really give a shit about what's going on around them and kind of focus on the objective. Yeah, I, um, you know, I don't have a, I don't have the ambition to be like trying to do like every event and all the, this is awesome because this is right here in my front yard, you know? So I can just like come over here and hang out and do little do little shit. I do I'll go to anything in Humboldt or Santa Rosa or whatever, but like the whole you know, everybody's always trying to get me to go to Spanibus or I was thinking about going to Colombia or Jamaica. These people got like one of the only permits down in Panama, like that's they actually can get it. It's really hard and they're like, Oh you gotta do it and I'm it's just all too much. Like it's not my lifestyle to be on the industry hustle so I just keep like making cool shit and uh, that's all I do you know I just grow plants and look through them and make some seeds and that's like my whole part of being in the in the thing you know I'm not with like trying to run around and chase everything all the time I can't I can't I don't have it in me you know how would you how would you introduce yourself to our audience uh, I mean basically like I'm just uh, like a lifelong really like plant lover and just been into weed for a long time and try to make cool stuff and um, keep stuff around that I like and try to make like new things and play around with with weed plants and make different breeds and stuff you know that's like my it's like my whole part of you know of weed stuff I'm not like a huge grower I'm not in any of all that kind of shit you know but um that's that's like what I what my little slice of stuff is, you know. Absolutely, Jackson. Um, last time we sat down was in 2019, and if I put like in my mind a fast forward timeline from then until now, what how would how have you evolved since then? Um, I don't know, not like not a whole lot. I mean, I started doing stuff like um, like uh, light depth for hunting through stuff faster, being able to go through more plants than I used to do stuff more like, you know, like um, I've done, you know, over the years, little indoors, little, little stuff, but like mostly I've always been like kind of a full season, big plant growing kind of guy. And I kind of stopped doing that after like 2018. So I was around the same time frame. So since then I've just been growing a lot more little plants to go through way more of my seeds I've made, try to kind of refine things more, uh, be a little bit more prolific with more stuff going on in that regard, like seeing more plants. Um, and, uh, you know, other than that, like not, not really a whole lot. I mean, since then, you know, normal, all my normal family stuff's all kind of the same. Um, and uh, you know, I don't know. Like I, I try to try to keep my my mentality getting a little bit better all the time and everything. And probably if I could see myself a few years ago, I'd be like, all right, cool. I'm a little bit sharper or whatever. Hopefully, but I, I don't know. In as far as evolving, who knows? You know, I'm a full full grown adult. Hopefully, I still am. But you know. I might be damn near the same as I was five years ago. So, right. Yeah. No, I hear you. I hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are you excited about in terms of like your cherries, your root beers? You may see some growers, you know, working with your gear and feeling really proud about it. Um. So, with the cherry stuff, I started. I went ahead and did. Uh, I had cherry lime at F five. And I was running them and they're like really great kind of like bulletproof outdoor plants, but indoor because of the cherry pie genetics in them. And because I selected them outdoor, like when I originally grew them outdoor, they were mostly intersex even on big outdoor plants. So I refined that to the point where outdoor, they're all good. But because I selected them outdoor, they still need to be refined further 
in like a stressful light damp or an indoor or whatever to get to that point. So I had crossed it with Gelato, 33, Sherbert, a few things kind of in the ballpark. And uh, the 33 came out really nice as far as like the high and the way the plants were. It was a little more dense than the Cherry Limeade. And so I, I did like a bunch of stuff with that Gelato 33 Cherry Limeade. And over the last couple years, people have been doing a lot like that pie cream. There's some really nice ones. Uh, the number 27 that Skunk Tech circulated a little bit. Like uh, if you check out like Snow Till Organics, uh, I think it's like Motor Boater 306 or something like on Instagram. Really nice pics where you can see like, okay, that's, it's like Cherry Limeade, but it's got the wedding, what is it, wedding pie in it. So it's got a little bit like crazier resin on it. Cause that, that mom from Skunk Tech had the really crazy thick resin. It's just like laminated and lacquered and fucking goo, you know? Um, so those have been cool, different things coming out of there. I use that mail on the Bubba, all that kind of shit. So this year, the last couple years, what I've been doing is taking small pots and going, okay, I got like 40 kinds of cherry limeade and all different, you know, F4, F5, F6, trying little populations to see like, okay, which directions should I have really gone with it and digging back in there. So I'm still kind of doing that. And then I went forward with that gelato cross a little bit more to make more hybrids um, because it was a little more practical at the stage it was at. Um, so that's kind of like the cherry work and then the cherry west I've been doing stuff with. Um, and uh, that's just been a really cool one. It's got all those crazy flavors and uh, the root beer stuff. I released uh, some of the root beer freeze, which was like two root beer back cross, two plants bred together. Um, and those have been really cool. I like those a lot. And uh, I used the mother of that cross with a uh, jarro to do a little bit different thing. And, and I put those out, those are really nice. So, you know, just kind of like going forward, seeing which ones I like the best, cloning them trying different crosses with those seeing if I really want to keep those always just playing with stuff and like um, trying to get it dialed into where I like all the plants while keeping a little bit of variety like root beer some people like the ones that are really sweet and some people like the ones that are a little bit more cushy and some people like the true soda ones that are like Pepsi Coke Dr. Pepper root beer like that like that real core flavor, but some people like the ones that lean further, and some people hate the ones that are real sweet, and some people hate the ones that are a little bit more plain cushy. So like, it's cool that there's still some variety, but they're all quality. So I try to kind of do, to keep that like that, as opposed to just, you know, like, selfing them and going forward in self self generations like you do with real proper breeding get them really like dialed in and bottlenecked it's like that's cool but then you have to make a, a, a direction every every way right to be able to go like this is you'll get this every time that's cool but the person who gets those seeds if you only go one direction a lot of people are going to be like damn this isn't like i liked that one i like the sweet one and other people are so if you have a little bit of variety people can still find what they saw that they liked coming out of a pack or two or whatever, you know? And then I have the self root beer. Skunk Tech made me a bunch of uh, S1s while he was doing some different stuff. And he's all, dude, I have the room. I had the clone. I was like, screw it. I just put it to the side and I made you a bunch and he showed up and he gave them all to me. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to take those, grow those and do that. Keep selfing them in different directions um, to really, to really be able to say these ones are all the sweet ones. These ones are all the more cushy lean in one or whatever, right? But um, trying to kind of, that's that's the thing is always like trying to figure out like, all right, where do I want to go with it? And then if you can't really decide, then try to go in a few different directions, you know? But that's the kind of stuff that I do with those ones. Cherry stuff, root beer stuff, lime. Always trying to like go different ways with them and see. And eventually maybe I'll hit the point where I go, Fuck all those other ones. I only want this. But like, you gotta try them to know, right? So that's like the whole, my whole focus always with those kind of things. What's the strain that you've done where you've gone to that point? 
Um, like the Sky Cuddler Double Kush right now, I have the F4 number two. I grew a few different lines and I was like, okay, I'll try some. And if I don't like them, I'll try some more. You know, lines meaning like I'll take one male and put it on a bunch of different females. And then female number two, that'll be the number two line going in that direction. Fem female number four, that'll be going in that direction, whatever. So then I'll go through my notes and go, okay, I really like this female. And I hit them both with the same male. Uh, you know, like the two and the four, and then this one over here, that one over there, and then grow them all side by side and be like, all right, that one didn't carry as much cool stuff. The mom, didn't, there's not as much of her in these seeds. She's bringing forth other stuff that's not quite what I want. But then like I did the number two, and the number two was like, you could have told somebody they were clones, and they'd be like, you'd think it was clones, you know? They're so consistent but they're also the thing I wanted. Because if it's consistent and it ain't the thing you want, that's a fail. So then you gotta go, okay, we gotta try new lines. But um, with the number two, they worked really good, so I'm gonna go into the number two and try a couple things coming out of it and keep doing the same thing. The number two, as it, is, as it stands now, you can grow them, they're all the same thing. But what happens is with certain pairings, sometimes you might have used a parent that's carrying a copy of something recessive. And if the male didn't carry it, or the male has it and the female doesn't have it, then you'll get that thing where people say like things, oh, it skips a generation, like twins or, you know, whatever it is, blue eyes or red hair or whatever. There's all these things that are recessive. Both parents gotta carry it. So if you see it pop out, then you know, okay, you gotta have two copies in that, that are, it's it, it inherited them from both sides and now you see it right but in a lot of cases they only inherit one and when you grow it you'll think that you have something like oh cool i got rid of it but it turns out there's still this one copy traveling in there on one yeah. here and there and it'll pop back out so once you, you get you know things, how to eliminate that shit? yeah yeah so once you think things are perfect then you still got to try more crosses out of it and then you'll know if you do enough different ones you'll be like okay it's gone it doesn't exist in here but if you don't try different pair, different pairings of different plants in it, you can fool yourself and think, oh, it's all refined and perfect and true breeding. But it ain't, because you use something that's still carrying a copy. And that's why selfie works so good, because it's really easy to not have to worry about whether it's coming from this side or that side and how it's traveling. You're like, when it pops up, you're like, oh, well, that one there must have two. And then when you self it again, and it doesn't come back, then you're like, well, it must, I, I, I probably got rid of it and you can keep trying. And, but you, all, you still always have to check things to see, because we're not using a lab to like look, you know, on the chromosome and see if there's this actual thing traveling and all, you know, like real proper scientific, the most modern, you know, breeders that have using the most scientific tools, they can just check and be like, no, we don't have it. Oh, we have it. Okay, this is gonna be the parent, that's the parent boom, breed them together and you won't see it again because you just bottlenecked it out. It's not in here anymore, right? But for like, for, you know, somebody who's just doing it all old school style, you really got to do a lot of different work. But you still need a human being to call those shots. Well, you still need, you're still always going to need a human being to be able to tell like all the stuff that is like the, 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 the qualities, right? Like to be able to go, okay, these are the things like that we our opinion is saying is good like we know yield is good and resin production is good and if you can find the genes that control that you can test for those and you could do that but you're still gonna have to be able to be like is it the shit does it smell good does it taste good does it got the high you want or does it just have a high THC or does it have a lot of this one one chemical you think is good and it's not you know excuse me I was imagining robots doing that shit in the future getting all excited and shit so eventually, if you can figure out exactly what controls everything, you could get to a point where you can use AI to go through and just tell you, no, it's this one. We looked at all the breakdown of drugs and we know that we know that like this drug and this other chemical and this other little thing right here that makes out this certain type of wax and all these different things like could be you figure out like these are always good and we always want more of these. And then you could start to go through and figure out, okay, 
we know that when this gene was present, we have this trait. And you could figure it out. It can be done, and it will be done, right? But for like somebody like me, I'm not interested in being in a lab and working with a bunch of partners doing all this stuff that I don't know how to do and all this. I'm just like, no, I'm going to see, like, is it good? And I'm going to do it the old school way, which takes a lot of work. But as long as you're honest with yourself, you can still get to the same place. It just takes longer and you have to grow out way more plants and there's way more fails where you're like, I did 20 of this and it's not what I want and I already grew them and I don't want nothing to do with it. But I grew these ones and these ones work. So now you know, you know, so like that's what happens when I'm breeding stuff, doing the trials to grow them out and go, okay, this worked, that didn't work. And it's just that constant process of, of playing with stuff, you know? And um, that's just what, that's like what I spend my time doing. I used to spend my time growing giant plants, putting big cages around them, tying them up, doing all kinds of stuff. And <clears throat> at the same time I would breed. But now I'm just like, no, I'm just only breeding. And a lot of plants that I'm growing, I'm just growing them to look at them. <laughs> no, nope, cutting them down, composting them, you know what I mean? But I'll still grow them all the way out. And there might be some really cool ones, and I might take those and re-veg them, get them as a clone, and okay, I'll lean it towards this direction, you can do it. But it's constantly like, you gotta be looking in the future and going, okay, what do I wanna do with this? And which ones of these have value? And which ones are wasting my time? And which ones am I fooling myself and telling myself, I gotta have this? Like, no, dude, throw that away and pop more seeds, find what's really, really hitting, and be like, all right, and this is what I want, you know? So that's like my whole, you know, all my time is spent doing that now, instead of trying to grow dope. I'm like, no, it's just looking through seeds. I got the seeds, I got a lot of them. So I need to now, I'm just look through them, look through them, pop 1500, look through them, pop 1500, look through them, you know? Sometimes if something's not that promising and I'm like, a lot of these probably suck, I'll, be like, I'll just grow 10 and I'll be like, okay, I had whatever, six females. I don't like any of them. I don't need to spend my time on that because I got other stuff where I can where I can pop 20 and get 10 or 15 females and look at them and be like, here it is. I need to spend my time on this. So it's just constantly like trying to like, you know, figure out like, what is this that's going on? I'm constantly like appraising the value of these different seed batches that I have to be able to be like, all right, I need to spend more time on this, spend more time on that, you know, or might even be something that I'm like, I think it's really promising. And then it's like, I happen to be the only person that really thinks it's cool. Cause it's like nostalgia control in my, my brain. I'm like, this, it reminds me of this time or what everybody else don't have that nostalgia. They weren't there at that time. Don't hit them the same. So right? it's a balance with your bias. You have to have a balance with your personal biases. To a degree, you know? And then for the most part, I'm really lucky because the things that I like, usually people like. Because I because I am kind of picky and like that I'm looking for these things that are real special to me after seeing a lot of stuff. So usually if I think it's special, most people are gonna think it's special too, you know? But occasionally there's something there where I'm just like, I really like this thing, and people are like, I think it's bland. And I'm like, but it's just like, you know, like I really like the Hindu I have. But in the market right now, even though that type, like Bubba, it's really influential in a lot of things. Cookies and gelato, they have a hint of that in there, but they have a little bit more to them. And for me, I still like that coffee smelling Bubba Hindu type. Like, I'm like, this should be, this is what you should be smoking. But people are like, oh, but it's got no candy. So then they don't like it. And I'm still stuck going, no, I love it. But I'll just keep doing it because I know for a fact that it's really good, you know? But it's still funny because it's like I can't put too much focus on that all the time because there's going to be a narrower slice of people are going to appreciate it. It's almost like you got to have more time smoking it to go, oh, okay, now I get it, you know? So it's like a balance of I do some stuff that's more crowd-pleasing that I know like is really, like to me, cherry limeade's insane, but I kind of like like Hindu as much. But you're never going to put them, if somebody's going to smell Hindu, it doesn't smell like nothing. They're going to smell cherry lemon. Go, oh my God. But if you give me a jar of both and I have to smoke it all the time, I'm like, I'm going to roll another Hindu. 
not a cherry limeade, even though the cherry limeade is kicking its ass in every category, that it, for me, it's just purely taste, right? So like, it's always that balance, but I'm not just gonna throw away all the Hindu work because people don't understand it, like, because I understand it. Other people will eventually, you know? What I'm trying to understand is, you said the Sky Cuddler Kush, you took it all the way, so to speak. You took it in all the directions, you took it Sky Cuddler step. Double Kush, which is, that, is just a little different. Does that take a decade, or how long does that take? Half a decade? Uh, I mean, from the very start of it, like, the beginning of making the first hybrid that went into it's like 2005 or something, right? So, um, right now, so that's like 10 years, right? Because it's like two, 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 2015 Decades. right Decades. now, right? So a good solid 10 years you to get here. You can be proud here, of that motherfucker. You know? You can be proud of that. Yeah. It takes about that long. Uh, but, um, wow. but the, so the actual may... work of like once it became what I call it and then then I then like it's now it's stacked other double kush. So then it's like all right, grow it this year, see what you like. Grow it again, breed it, breed a bunch of them, keep the ones that you like, try some of them, find the one that you think is better than the other ones that you tried, then take those, then breed them forward. So like I don't necessarily breed them every time because you can't just go around breeding everything. You just wind up with a bunch of seeded weed to constantly be doing all this work that's not going to lead nowhere. You don't want these ones anyway. So first I have to grow some and make sure. And if I find something that I'm like, I still got to keep this as a clone, I'll re-veg it. I don't do the crazy trip of trying to keep a clone off every plant. Um, and, but when you do the re-veg thing where you grow it all the way till it's done and then just take it and grow it back out to where you grow clones back out of a bud, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you can't just wait until the weed is like, going downhill overdone. If you wait till it's too late or till the weed's fully, fully done, you risk it being too tired and it won't want to grow back. And some stuff will want to grow back hella easy. But I like to like, if I know that I really like that one and it's close to done, then I'll re-veg it when it's still like two weeks from being done or whatever. Cause I already know this is the shit right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it and put it under lights when it's not quite even finished. Then it still has the real crazy big, right? And then I'll be able to get the weed. And I know if weed's good when it's two, two weeks early, it's already going to be good then. It's not going to be as good as it's going to wind up. But if it's not hitting real nice when it's a little early, then it's probably not one that I want to really focus on anyway. So I'll go ahead and like cut half the plant and have the weed already almost all the way mature by the time it's dry. And I'm like, oh, these three seem really great. I'll smoke those ones. And then whatever is the best, I'll be able to kill the other ones, maybe even before they're really fully re-vegging. And then I'll leave that one there and go, this is the one where the weed was really good and let it re-veg. And then that way I can just take, what I used to do is I'd go, I can't plant too many plants because if I get something really special, I'll just lose what was really special. Because I can't grow 1,500 plants, clone them all and reliably get everyone to root if I'm only taking a couple clones. So then you're like, all right, I gotta take at least six clones, 10 clones of every plant, and you're growing 1,500. So now you got 15,000 clones and you're not gonna use none of them. I can't do that, because I don't have a crew of people I'm pointing fingers at, telling them, go do this, go take these, boom. All this money sitting there running lights to keep these clones, heating mats, all this stuff to keep every plant. So I would be like, all right, well, there's no point in me growing a ton of seeds. I'll just grow a couple hundred a year or whatever. And I would get good stuff out of that. And I was able to make cool stuff. But now what I've started doing is just being like, boom, grow 2,000. And then you wind up with like 1,200 females or whatever. And then you butt them all out. And if any of them are really incredible, you revenge them. So then you don't have to really worry, and it makes a huge makes a huge difference. And then I'll grow them in small pots. Sometimes I'll grow them only in five and a half inch pots, and they'll be like this big, and have like you can tell what the weed is, you know. And you can tell if they grow fast or they grow slow. You can tell if they want to be more branchy or they don't. And you so you can tell a lot about what you want. And what's most important for me is how does it smoke. So you're still gonna get a nice chunk of weed where you're like you got a bag like this of weed once it's dry. 
if you can't tell if it's really worth keeping once you smoke a half ounce or something of it, it's probably not that, probably not the one you want anyway, right? So I'm just always doing it like that now, and it makes me be, and sometimes I'll grow them bigger, but it makes me be able to go through things that I'm not sure about really fast, because you get all these numbers, you know? Like it's not, there's not this huge pressure of like, of like, oh, well I gotta, I got these special seeds and I got 20 plants, so I better clone every one in case I lose one. And then you let them finish all, you try to clone them, you let them finish all the way out. Now they're all the way budded and you're like, damn, I lost this clone over here. And it turns out this is my favorite one, you know? And you're like, whoa, I just fucked the whole project up. Unless you seeded them all. And if you're gonna run through tons of seeds, you can't seed them all pure in a small space without hella crazy different little contraptions for all those different pollens and shit. So instead you can run through them, find the ones you really want, and once you go, okay, number three was the shit, I re-vegged it, I can pop more seeds and find a male that's just like that later on and then hit this clone and keep the breed going from there. So that's like the more refined process with still being able to have like tons of numbers, you know? And that's like how I try to do it now and it works. This is so dope, Jackson. We have just like maybe five minutes left or so. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the epiphany that I'm happy speaking with you is that most of us, we age along with our human counterparts. Or we'll have a pet that we age with. And obviously one can observe the relationship that the owner has with that pet or one has with their son or their wife, etc. And so what's dope is I'm, I'm looking at you, man, and I'm like, breeders have relationships with, with plants over time. But it's not like we're having uh, different pets, different plants. It's like you're working, focus on specific lines that you've actually created. So it's this beautiful relationship that I'm learning from. Even though I keep on doing these interviews, you know what I'm saying? You can you speak. It's, it's so cool. How, how, how would you speak to that? Well, my real question is, you know, we're only getting older. Like, in the next decade, two decades, have you thought of what you want to accomplish as a breeder? I mean, it's always the same thing for me. I'm always trying to make sure that I'm able to kind of find things that are really special and keep them around. So it's always the same goal as like from when I first started doing stuff. You know, you're like, okay, I found this thing. I want to make sure that I still have it. So it's just a, the question of always doing that. So as far as like a real goal of anything greater than that, it's like all the rest of the stuff just kind of, it can just kind of happen as long as you're still doing cool stuff with the plants that you believe in. You know what I mean? Like naturally, if it's really that good, people will be interested in it. I'll be able to keep stuff going. Like it makes it like worth doing. And um, you know, other than that, it's just a matter of like, uh, hoping that you keep finding things that are special and you keep not losing them. It's just like the same goal, but as, as time goes by, I just start to like realize like, That's not PTSD from the drug war? What's that? Is that's not a response for PTSD from the drug war, like the fear of losing it? Or is that just as a No, 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 term, I mean, right? just in, a, in terms, so what's weird about, what's weird about anything living, right? Like, at any point, if you look at history, you go like, there's these lineages of anything that's alive, whether it's dogs, horses, cows. No, I understand, I understand. Bananas, tomatoes, potatoes, right? Like, uh, everything gets lost. It's always getting lost. And then it's also getting developed, and there's more new things. But in general, with varieties, with genetics, once we really started messing with a lot of stuff, as humans, we tend to get these things and like destroy where they originally come from and then bottleneck the gene pool to be narrower and narrower till the, after a while, it's like, you can't get, you, you, can't, you can't get a variety of anything alive, right? It's not like a house burns down or, you know, like a house burns down, you build a new house. But like when you lose anything that's based on genetics, once you've lost it, it's just gone. So it doesn't matter if it's like um, somebody's gonna take it from you or not. You can just lose it just from being careless 
or lazy or foolish or making a bad decision about how you what you pick or not making any like open pollinations to keep all your original stuff intact and like like you talk about getting older it's like as you get older like you look and you go okay and I, I've told people this before like you own you might feel like when you're growing dope you just grow dope forever but all of us realistically only have depending on when you start maybe you have 15 years like if you're growing outdoor it's 15 seasons if you're growing indoor maybe you can pull off five runs or maybe some people have big scenes and they stagger them so there's tons of rotating runs and then you can get a lot of cycles to grow right but no matter what we only grow for so many years so we only have so many chances to make so many breeds and to keep so many things so like right now if me and you decide like oh let's keep everything well it'd be like saying like we'll just go read every book right now Go listen to every song I on iTunes. Sure you know what I mean? Like, you might be able to watch everything on Netflix if you play it while you're trimming weed and shit. I think you're trying to make something that's going to last forever. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, that's what's, that's what's the most fucked up thing about it is that no matter how hard you try, we don't have enough people who are ever going to be interested in farming, gardening, animal breeding, all these different things. Like... No matter what, we're constantly going to see it just kind of get whittled away and get fucked up in a sense, right? So, like, for me, I'm just always like, all right, well, I kind of just got to keep trying to trying to do stuff and do stuff and spread it around. And more and more people are into it. And the more people try it, the more people keep things and realize, like, that it's fun and that it's fulfilling to, like, make seeds and keep things. But it's constantly, we're constantly just on the edge of like things being gone. And that, that doesn't have any, I mean, it was real bad, of course, when they were chopping down people's stuff and you're losing it that way, right? But it, it, it's not so much, it, it's not like now that it's legal, it's, it, the genetics are just safe. They're safer, but there's not, there's no, there's just no way for us to be like, okay, every little every little thing like the closest we can get is taking the oldest things we can find doing like thousand plant open pollinations and mixing uh, using every male and every female all together mixing all the seeds together and then putting those in like cryo storage right then you can like have your best shot at really keeping it but i wouldn't be surprised if over the years we get to a point where you're like yeah Oh yeah, I mean right now you can ask people like what's the best weed you ever smoked and then be like do you still have it? Do you have the seeds? Do you have the clone? And people will be like no, I don't like it was just this one thing I saw this one time So it's like always playing catch-up to try to do it. You know what I mean? And then um, I mean Yeah, I have PS, PD, P, you know PTSD, but like it's not no, I it's not what I it's understand. from you know I, it's not like th this concept you know but you know yo man um, is there a way that we can get a hold of you like the our audience can get a hold of you just on Instagram uh, I mean uh, my Instagram is Mean Gene from Mendocino um, no underscores all one word but um, like on Instagram it's like I add I have my my shit's on private and it keeps my account up, right? Because it does not popping up where it's not supposed to pop up. I don't use hashtags, so it don't pop up where, you know what I mean? When you use a hashtag, your post pops up over here where someone else used this hashtag. And it might not be a weed hashtag and people see it. And you could have just regular normal people are just reporting your shit because they're like, yeah, I don't, this is drugs on my account. I'm popping up on my explore and all this, right? So I keep it private and I add people but I add everybody. I don't like look through and go, oh, I won't add this guy or I won't add that guy. Unless it's like specifically like some real scam shit. Like if it's a fake account of somebody who I know. Like this is a fake account. Delete, you know? But I add everybody. But people get pissed off. People are, I like will see stuff. People are like, oh, I won't even add me, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I go and I add 200. And after I get through 200, I go to add more and it glitches out and it starts giving me all the same people 
mixed back in that I just added. And so it's like I can add a little bit all the time, but I tend to like just get burnt out on it because it's just eh. So I need to go through and add everybody, but just if if people request to follow the account and they don't get added, it's not like I'm like, well, I'm not gonna add this guy. I'm just like, this fucking interface, I just don't wanna add, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. but everybody can follow that account. I have another one, it's Freeborn Selections, but I, that's like a backup account and I don't really use it. It's just there just in case I lose my main account. And um, that's, that's the, you know, people can send me DMs and I get a lot of, you know, if your account is decent size, it's a lot of graphics artists, it's a lot of people, you should sell our jewelry, you should sell our t-shirts or whatever, you know, it's all bullshit spam accounts hitting up in my DM. So it's not like you'll necessarily get a hold of me through there, but I do try to check in and see and, you know, but it's hard to keep up on all that because just because of, once again, the nature of the interface, you know? Yeah, no, um, Jackson. But yeah. Yo, just for the sake of time, man, uh, I just want to say thank you for this interview, bro. It was fucking super dope. You know yeah, hell yeah. Saying? Thanks for doing it, dude. It was off the yeah. hook, Jackson. Thank yeah. you, bro. Yeah. Thanks, Danny.